I think that telepathy is a misunderstood form of communication. It's something that is natural, something that we do all the time, but we're not usually aware that we're doing it. Telepathia. Tele means distance, pathia means feeling. So it's not mind reading as much as mind feeling. So we can actually feel the thought more than read the thought. And that's how it's done. Mind reading, telepathy, is done through feeling. Not thinking a thought, but feeling a thought. You don't say I love you, you feel I love you. What are we talking about when we say the subconscious mind? I think it's helpful to think of it as a, as a place. And it's a place where your consciousness goes when your mind is blank for a second. And it's a place of, of course, incredible powers. Spirituality. Spirituality is a term that has different meanings to different people, but at its core, it's a state of peace. It's a state where there is no identification with the self, where there is no ego, where you're one with all things. All these are different aspects to it. It comes in more mystical sides, it comes in more uh, secular sides, but that's its, its core. When you're talking about hypnosis and you're trying to explain what it is, it's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult because hypnosis is a state. It's like trying to explain to someone how an emotion feels or anything else. I think the best analogy is how you feel kind of before you wake up, that kind of you're conscious, but you're a little bit out of it. Your body cannot tell the difference between something that is real and something that is imagined. And hypnosis kind of uses that as a loophole for you to program yourself with a positive experience. And that takes care of the hardest step which is doing it the first time. Doing anything the first time is usually, there's a lot of fear involved, it's not the easiest thing. So from, with hypnosis, you bypass that. You have an experience, an ideal experience, the experience you want to have for whatever the situation is. The body accepts that as being real, and because the body accepts that as being real, you've now wired it. And energy is one term we use. We could use many terms to describe it. But it's a, you can feel its presence. You know when it's there. It has a, a vibration to it. It has a frequency to it. What is energy? Energy is a frequency. It's a vibration. It can be felt much better than it can be described. It can be transmitted. So transformation could be the idea of reshaping, reconstructing one's ego a reconstructing of your personality. Externally and internally, your thinking patterns are different. Your emotional patterns are different. It's, it's as close to being a different personality as you can be, and it's natural, it's real. The best way to program is through the subconscious mind. Programming here is to use the subconscious to change behavior. And the way you do that is some kind of mixture, some kind of combination between thought and emotion. Thought and emotion together. The, the best times to stimulate the subconscious are at 100% when it's completely absorbed in an activity or at zero, completely at rest. 100% or zero, the two extremes. An emotion can take you over but if you're aware enough, you can spot the emotion and go with it. And if you allow it to be, go with it. Don't fight against it. You allow it to wash itself through you. You allow it to kind of play itself out. You don't, don't resist it. If you resist it, it just gets stronger. The emotion will pass like that.
Belief systems. Belief systems are the way that we filter everything. They're the filter for reality, if you will. Whether we're aware of it or not, they're, they're complex systems, right? A belief system, we can, we, can, we can sum it up sometimes in a sentence, in a philosophy, but it's actually a mixture of different layers. They are incredibly important. They affect everything we do. And many times we're not even aware of what our belief systems are. Auto suggestion is repeating a one syllable command to yourself. And you're repeating it so much that the conscious mind at some point turns off and the subconscious receives the command. So let me explain that. If you say laugh and you think of something funny as you do that and you repeat that in your head and you just keep on repeating laugh, 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 you're going to start laughing, right? It's overlooked because it's ridiculously simple. It's, it's the mind wants something more complicated, of course, but extremely effective. Telekinesis is taking energy from the mind and making it physical. Being able to take something that starts on a mental level and sending it, sending it out, but sending it out so that it has physical results. When, when you can focus your energy so much that you can actually affect something on the physical plane. Telekinesis is one of those subjects that people usually want to see in front of them because they've, they've heard about it, but they, it's one of those things that it's just too much. They, they really want to see it. Our old friend, the ego. Let's define the ego as a mask that we wear, that we think is ourselves, but is not. We can talk about the ego for years. We're not going to do that. For the sake of our discussions, the conscious mind and the ego are the same thing. Healing is healing is a transfer. It's a transfer of energy. It is uh, happens when a when a healer, with the person being healed, are sharing a communal energy, and then so then what a good healer does is kind of gets out of the way and let the the body heal itself. Let the energy cleanse itself. So I think healing could easily be defined, or not easily, but could best be defined as a transfer of energy. The energy doesn't come so much from a good healer as it comes through a good healer. Linking is a technique used in hypnosis. It is used to connect things that are usually not connected. It can be useful when you have a dialogue with yourself when you talk to yourself, but not like a crazy person. You talk to yourself, you connect things that are helpful for you. So something happens, you get upset, make it something happens, you get happy at the most like basic level. Okay, let's just do it like that. Now, how you create that link, I mean, that's, that's where the essence is. It's interesting how habits are formed. Because habits are formed not with the conscious mind, but through the subconscious. When you're not trying to learn the habit, that's the best time to learn the habit. And what we do is the opposite, of course. We, we, we try to make ourselves learn something new. When we're not paying attention, we are governed by our habits. So our habits really are everything. And any kind of self-improvement, self-change, is going to have to go through habits. You're going to have to learn how to, how to create habits. Willpower defeats itself. That's a difficult one for us to grasp because it goes against our entire way of learning things. But willpower, very effective for getting things started, very effective for overcoming momentum blocks, but that's its best use. Willpower loses against imagination. That's all you need to know for now. Willpower versus imagination. Good fight. Imagination wins. One interpretation of consciousness would be your ability to actually do things in real time and perceive them as they're happening. Perceiving them in such a way that you could actually modify them as they're happening, if that made sense when the mind is 
allows itself to, um, to be free of itself. Consciousness is simply being here. Consciousness is simply being here. We're talking about resistance. So resistance in some form is the enemy of enlightenment. It's the enemy of being conscious. Resistance has many forms. Resistance has infinite forms. Resistance fuels the ego. Resistance keeps you out of being conscious. There is what, you're, what you want to happen and what's happening and the distance between those is the source of resistance. So what you do in anything from, from hypnosis to, to meditation, you have to learn how to, how to diffuse the resistance. There are many ways to do suggestions, but usually it involves some form of distracting the conscious mind and then sending the real message to the, to the subconscious. A suggestion when properly funneled through the subconscious mind becomes a command, it becomes an action. Controlling your thoughts. Being able to not be dominated by your thoughts, very important. So the secret here is trying to control your thoughts. Don't try to control them. Let them do what they want. And they settle down. They settle down. You allow the thoughts to pass. You allow the thoughts to move. You detach from the space between you and the thought. Enlightenment is staying conscious, consistently, continuously, but not fully. Enlightenment is simply never completely losing your consciousness, never forgetting. There, I mean, there, there, how can you explain it so quickly? You just, you go directly to, to what it is, which is part of you staying conscious all the time. Probably if you had all the great masterminds of the world together and they had to vote on the best mindset to adopt, general, I would say to approach things as if they're a game. The feeling of a game. So approaching things in life as a game, that's a great, probably the best mindset. There, there are many that are great though. Stress is clearly a form of resistance something that we all deal with is that stress can be used it can be harnessed to help you of course now easier said than done usually because of stress we're inside of it so much that we come out of it and we're where was i stress is when all the wires are tangled and you can untangle them you can unwire them but in order to deal with stress you have to be able to detect it so stress can be harnessed. I think that any situation can be approached from three perspectives, which are the physical, the mental, and the emotional. I want to say they can be broken down into levels. I use the word levels because it's, there's, there's obviously the, the mental component to the physical and the physical component to the mental. They're intertwined in some way. It's something that looks like, like a, a combination of three circles. I think if you start to think of things in, on those levels first, it makes things much simpler. Intuition is knowing something without knowing why you know it. Intuition is knowing something without knowing why you know it. It can come from deep inside. It can come through the subconscious. I think, though, if you think of it as an imbalance between what the conscious mind knows and what the subconscious knows, that difference creates intuition. So the subconscious mind is aware of something, but the conscious mind does not know why the subconscious mind is aware of it. Boom, intuition. Metaphysics. Now we're getting deep. Metaphysics is the study of things beyond the physical world, beyond what we can see, touch, feel, hear. 
probably forgetting one. Yes. When the traditional study of the physical world ends, you're talking about things that are not physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. The secret to a good meditation is just to detach, to let go. That's it in here. Whatever that means to you, that's the secret to a good meditation. The secret of a good meditation is to detach, to allow, to let go any way you want to, in your mind. But that's different for every person, right? There's a different formula kind of to do it. The meditative state is similar to the hypnotic state. In fact, for the, when you're deep into meditation, that is very similar to being deep into hypnosis. The difference is that in hypnosis, you have a, more of a guide, whereas in meditation, you're kind of, you just kind of get there and observe what you observe. In hypnosis, you're there and then you go into a, a different experience. The relationship between the past, the present, and the future. And the answer to this one is, I'm not quite sure what the relationship is. I know that there is a relationship. I know that the past affects the future and the present affects the past. And the, this is affecting that. But you don't know, sometimes it doesn't affect it because the past and the, and the future, but this is going to happen. It's a jumble, the past, present, and the future. A jumble. They're all connected, they're interconnected, and they're connected in the mind. And they're connected in the mind in a way that can be kind of difficult to untangle. Words are a representation of a thought. A word is a representation of a thought. A picture is a representation of a thought. But a word has disadvantage that it is stopped by the barriers of language. So a picture of a dog would be understood by the by the, all the world. They would see it. They would have a different names for it, but it would be the same thing. But an actual, the actual word would have to be translated to each language. So pictures are a closer representation than words are. Whether you're doing meditation, whether you're doing hypnosis, uh, whether you're doing any kind of activity where you need to relax, where you need to be more conscious, in the activity where you need to be more present. The breath is the fundamental place that you start. And I think the, the main thing is just try to do the breath as uh, consciously as you can, as maybe as slowly and just pay attention to it, notice it, and that usually gets anything started. Self-talk, I think self-talk is very healthy. I don't think you should do it out loud. Whether it's, it can be very damaging or very, very helpful, certainly very powerful. It's the last line of defense, what you tell yourself, what you believe about yourself. It's how you feel and how you see yourself. Zoning, being with the flow, being completely absorbed in an activity. Being 100% absorbed in activity is zoning. So that's why you have a player who scores an amazing goal and you say, what did you do? And they ask the player and the player says, I don't know what I did because they were so involved in the activity. It was natural. It was, it was habitual, it was second nature. It, that's zoning. You're so involved in the activity, you're unaware of the mechanics that make the activity function possible. Memetics shows us just how easily we are influenced by things that many times we're not aware of. Thoughts originate and how many times they don't come from us. When you see behaviors in you that you don't know how they got there, it's because you're subconsciously learned it. You learned that without any effort, without even trying to learn it. That's how the subconscious learns. Memory is very interesting because with a few techniques, you can learn how to do amazing things with your memory, but you have to know the techniques. It's more complicated than I'm summing it up here, but if you can create associations in your mind that are um, 
odd, and bizarre, and strange, and different, they'll stick in your mind, right? For good or for bad. Imagination is the mind's ultimate weapon. Imagination is, is, is all powerful. Imagination is fantastic. Imagination is, is completely necessary for any kind of personal greatness or profession, whatever you want in life, imagination is a very important part of it. But it's only the first step. It's the first step. But imagination is not sufficient. Imagination is necessary, but it's part of the equation. Manifestation is the idea that you can take an idea and put all your focus, your attention, your love, your heart, your passion, your brains, your knowledge, your hunches, your intuitions, all together and make it real enough so that it actually happens, so that it comes real, so that it manifests in your life. Like anything else, if you believe it, it's real.